so we said that we have to change our approach and come to the quantum mechanical model till now we have been dealing with the newton's laws of motion for the particle based motions right so newton's laws of motion they served us well till our object was macroscopic okay so serves well the microscopic objects okay no i'm i'm sorry i'm absolutely sorry it it serves well the macroscopic objects okay so so fails to since it fails to include the wave nature right and fails to include the uncertainty and the one that includes both of them okay is called the quantum mechanics so it is quantum mechanics which includes both the both the wave nature and the and the uncertainty principle right so what happens when you apply this okay that's why the newton's laws of motion applied to the macroscopic particle fails motion fail for microscopic particles for microscopic objects right while the quantum mechanical model while the quantum mechanical model explains both explains both the microscopic for which it was actually originally developed as well as as well as the macroscopic particles okay it solves for both so if you apply it to solve say a ball falling from if if you apply the quantum mechanics to the problem of a ball falling from a height and you want to know the trajectory and its related energy exchanges you'll get the correct answer right because even the slightest the whatever is happening it is it is taking every damn thing into account but but not so this right now this quantum mechanical method was developed by two people independently okay it was developed by first he was erwin schrodinger okay 
and the second fellow was none other than the one we know, the Eisenberg. Right? And for developing this quantum mechanical model, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1933 in physics, in, in physics and we are studying chemistry right now, okay. So, it is explaining the chemistry, actually ahead as we go to the matter, both the physics and the chemistry converge, right? As I said, understanding the full throttle quantum mechanical application and its solution requires a huge amount of mathematical background of the graduation level which we are not equipped to handle right now. Now since we are not equipped to handle that, we will we'll see, see the gist of it, what, what, what is the, the whole conclusion of it. Now for a system that does not change energy with time, right, for a system that does not change its energy with time, that does not change its energy with time, the, the, the Schrodinger equation is written as the Schrodinger equation is written as as H psi is equal to E psi. Okay, where this is called the Hamiltonian. Okay, it, it, it is nothing but a mathematical operator. It is a mathematical operator. Our psi is the is the wave function, the one which we are trying to solve. Okay, that if it moves in a in a manner of wave, how will it how will it go about? Okay, and and E is the total energy of the system. Is the total energy of the system okay fine that is the total energy of the system Now the total energy has to include everything, okay, so, so the total energy includes everything, it includes the, the K of the system, okay, so the K of the, of the electron, nuclei,
and the P of the system. This includes that due to the attraction, okay, including the attraction between the nucleus and electron and also the repulsion between the electrons. Now you understand when Bohr was when 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 Bohr was trying to define this, he was pretty accurate with the monoelectronic systems, right? Hydrogen-like atoms. We we say they were hydrogen-like atoms. They are hydrogen-like atoms. Okay. Why? Because somehow when two of these are moving, you are not, suppose two electrons are moving, you are not able to take into account the repulsion between these electrons. And this system here, here is able to do that. Apart from everything, this takes into account the whole energy of the system which we were not earlier able to account for. Get that? Okay. Apart from the two other things that it is taking into account, namely the, the, the wave nature and the, and the uncertainty principle. Fine? Fine? Now, this will be solved for, for the hydrogen atom and we'll see see how it looks like right that we do the next